um, the Office of the Vice President would like to thank everyone for uh, joining us on our Thanksgiving and would like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and I hope that uh, you spend your Christmas and holidays with your loved ones and your families. Thank you. <coughs> Question? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I the lawyers presented me with options, and I asked them if I needed to go the, to the NBI for the subpoena. And then they said that I have options not to go. I can send a letter. I can send a position paper. I can send an affidavit. And so we decided that uh, a letter will be uh, sent uh, to the NBI. And then um, with regard to patas, I don't think magiging patas itong investigation na ito. Dahil kung nakita nyo naman yung mensahe uh, ng Pangulo na sinabi niya na ganitong kriminal na mga, sorry hindi ko maalala yung exact uh, words na sinabi, pero sinabi niya ganitong mga kriminal na ingest, sinabi niya ganitong mga kriminal na gawain na eh, hindi ko palalampasin. So, sa makita na natin, no, uh, the pronouncements of the president, uh, meron ng bias doon. And uh, kung nakita nyo rin yung interview ng isang USEC ng Department of Justice, sinabi niya, a threat is a threat. Um, well, if you're a lawyer, you would argue na no. There's several kinds of uh, threats. But uh, nakita nyo na na doon pa lang sinabi na niya kung ano yung position niya. At uh, as a USEC of DOJ, we expect that that is the position of the Department of Justice. So kahit pa man pumunta ako doon, hindi ako pumunta doon, we believe and I believe that um, we, meaning the lawyers and I, believe that cases will be filed. So kahit pang sabihin nila na merong investigasyon, sa simula pa lang, na desisyon na sila na mag-file sila ng cases. Ma'am, clarification lang, ah, nabanggit niyo po, ano pa rin ang ilang letter, aside from that, ah, magbibigay po ba tayo ng affidavit or statement po? Hindi na. Ah, nag, ah, tinanong ko sa lawyer kung ah, idadagdag ko pa ba yung affidavit ko. Sabi niya, hindi na daw kasi nilagay ko naman na doon sa lo, la, letter, nilagay ko na doon sa letter, kung ano yung sasabihin ko sa affidavit. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ma'am Cedarina Montes from NHP. You have mentioned that uh, parang, um, there's all, there are already biases on the on how the government or, or the DOJ treat your case. So what would be the worst case scenario na nakikita ninyo na maaaring mangyari sa DOJ? Um, Okay. Ang worst case scenario, thank you, Ma'am Sel. Ang worst case scenario na nakikita namin is uh, removal from office, uh, impeachment, and then patong-patong na mga kaso, multiple cases uh, to be filed, uh, which the lawyers already told me to expect as well. That is why I just decided not to go. Uh, to the NBI because clearly the pronouncements of the president and the uh, USEC of DOJ point to cases uh, to be filed. Well, now, um, following the case before that, it could be like a violation of anti-terrorism law and slander, which are non-dateable offenses. So, um, could that be part of the worst case scenario that would be arrested in the case and no bail? Yes, uh, that could be as well. That is a possibility, ma'am, uh, for cases uh, that are uh, without bail. And as I said, um, the, when I read the subpoena, I, I read there, it was for grave threats. 
na hindi naman grave threats yung ginawa ko under the revised penal code and it was for anti-terror law. So, napaisip ako bakit uh, anti-terror law ang iniimbestigahan nila. And then, it's, so it's not the first time that I've heard of the anti-terror law uh, used against a, a person. So, uh, the first time I, I read about it, they used it against uh, Congressman Arnie Tevez. So I inquired um, about what happened in uh, Negros. So I was told, yun nga, uh, there was a red notice, there was a um, unblock, uh, freezing of assets, uh, money, there was, well, a warrant of arrest, yes. And very recently, I read again the law, and then I found there that there is a provision their removal from office. So on that point, um, it's still a, 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 an avenue, I think, that they're pursuing uh, to remove me from office. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, I, will, I do not plan to leave the country or I do not plan to hide if there will be a warrant of arrest, um, mainly because um, my children are here. So if I am um, detained, uh, I want to be able to still uh, see my uh, children. So I have no plans of doing that. I have no plans of uh, leaving the country to hide. Um, no, I think, um, well, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Congressman Rodante Marcoleta for his offer uh, to be my lawyer in the impeachment case. Um, I appreciate it because he's a very good lawyer. He's a brilliant lawyer. In fact, uh, he pointed out to me points during the committee hearing that I was, as a lawyer, I was not able to um, see. So um, that shows his um, astuteness in uh, the law. But um, I feel that he will better serve the country if he remains as a member of the House of Representatives. Uh, that is what is important right now. We need good public servants, good leaders, good uh, officials in uh, government. And I assure everyone that uh, we already have lawyers helping us. In fact, the moment that uh, Franz Castro announced last year that they are planning to file an impeachment, we already talked to uh, lawyers who will handle the impeachment case at the time. But now, cases pala, three. So we just need more uh, lawyers. And uh, we already discussed this with the first team that we uh, no, hired as lawyers. Yes, ma'am. So, um, I just want to ask how, how are we preparing or what are the, our preparation and how are we going to face the issue over the next week? Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. So, very recently, we had a meeting with the lawyers and um, what was discussed there was the arrangements because we needed more lawyers. We are expecting another impeachment case, no? so this, this may be three impeachment cases. So, and then um, we will await 
official copy of the articles of impeachment so that um, they can um, prepare the defense. We already have advanced copies of what is filed in the House of Representatives and they're starting preparatory works right now. Um, ma'am, uh, most of your allies are former allies have changed position or changed um, you know, their, um, their sides. Um, how do you feel right now? And if, for example, the impeachment comes through, um, are you confident that the numbers will be counted? Uh, no, we're not uh, confident with numbers, ma'am, um, because uh, impeachment is a legal process and a political activity. So we are confident with the legal aspect of the impeachment because um, um, all the lawyers that I asked to review the initial drafts of the impeachment complaint really said that uh, this is not, um, the, well, they would say it's not an impeachable offense and this is not an actionable offense, uh, things like that, lawyer talk. But uh, with regard to uh, politics, uh, that is a different matter altogether. So we do not know what will happen How with that. Uh, well, that's politics. Um, they always say that uh, there are no per permanent friends and enemies in uh, politics. So um, it really depends on the person, no? on the politician. No? Uh, what path he will choose. Yes. The House of Government Committee uh, said that we are eyeing the possibility of filing slander, technical malversation, and falsification charges among others uh, against you and several other officials of the OVP and formerly the DepEd in relation to the alleged misuse of the confidential funds. Have you discussed this already with your legal team, with any of, of the lawyers? And uh, have you, what can you say that that is a very heavy case of slander? Yes, yes uh -oh. um, we have an inventory of possible cases to be filed because right now it's only the two impeachment cases that are filed with the House of Representatives. All the other cases, we have a list, we have an inventory, and we have lawyers assigned uh, for each case. Usually cases that are similar, we assign it to one lawyer. And then um, uh, other cases, we assign it uh, to other lawyers uh, so that um, we ensure that um, all the cases have um, lawyers uh, focused on uh, each case. Um, uh, any, any thoughts on that? Or any thoughts on that? Ma'am, I'm going to talk about your family now about this. Because I'm going to talk about the lawyer about the family. CAPRD, I'm going to talk about the family. And I'm going to talk about the family. Hindi pa kami nagkausap ni dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. I expect na magkikita kami as usual uh, sa December 24 sa bahay ng mother ko. Likely, baka doon namin mapag-usapan yan kung man uh, mapag-usapan namin dahil madalas kasi kapag nagkasama-sama yung pamilya, lalo na pag nandyan yung mga apo, ay yung mga apo yung uh, pinag-uusapan ng uh, pamilya. Nag- uh, Nagsabi si Pangulong Duterte na magpapadala siya ng pera para sa pambayad daw ng mga abogado kasi alam niya na napakaraming mga abogado ngayon ang uh, kinuha para sa iba't ibang mga kaso. Pero nagsabi na rin ako uh, through my brother kasi yung kuya ko yung uh, sinabihan niya. Nagsabi ako na i uh, wag na lang siya magpadala ng pera dahil nakapaghanda naman na kami para sa 
impeachment case. Kasi yung sinabi niya impeachment case eh. So sabi ko nakapaghanda kami sa impeachment case kasi nga last year nag-announce na si Franz Castro ng impeachment. So the moment na sinabi yon and the moment na nakita namin na tuloy-tuloy yung attacks uh, against me ay naghanda na rin kami para sa mga abogado. Yes, ma'am. I'm not being evasive. Um, if you are referring to the Congress, to the budget hearing and the hearings in the House of Repre Representatives, I'm not being evasive. I am not answering the questions because they have no authority to ask confidential questions. I am answering questions about the use of the money in the Commission on Audit, and there is no, you ask the Commission on Audit if there was anything at all that they can say or see that we are not cooperative with the audit. So it is wrong to say that I am evasive. I am definitely not answering questions about the use of the fund, about confidential funds, because it pertains to national security and the lives of the people involved in intelligence operations. And uh, yes, as I said, we have fully cooperated with the audit process of the Commission on Audit, who has the sole jurisdiction to ask questions about the use of confidential funds. funds. In fact, um, two quarters of the Department of Education are already cleared by the Commission on Audit, but it is still being questioned inside the committee uh, in the House of Representatives. So, um, there is a reason why I am not answering questions from the House of uh, Representatives. Plus the fact that, as I said, it is an attack. It is a political attack. If you were, if you're, you are in aid of legislation and you want to legislate about confidential funds, you do not target one office and terrorize and torment the employees of that office, what you do is you what, uh, do a sampling, a random sampling of the offices who have confidential funds. Why not call the office of the president who has billions and billions of confidential funds if you want to legislate about uh, confidential funds? So that shows that um, they're singling out the office of the vice president. And I really feel that it's very disrespectful to the office of the vice president. That is also why when they ask that I respect their process, you know, beget, uh, respect begets respect. So if they want respect, they should first respect the office of the vice president. That is what I was saying, that they don't like me. They don't like my person. They don't like Indaisara Duterte, but they have to respect the office of the vice president. So if they want to investigate conv confidential funds, they don't single out one office. I understand that. Uh, Vicky, just to follow up, as of yesterday or the other day, um, the House also alleges that over 400 names uh, that excite with acknowledgement receipts, again, on the issue of the confidential funds, wala daw pong records at the DSA. Ma'am, you can offer an explanation because we know that this is a legal proceeding, pero pinag-uusapan po siya ngayon, ma'am, sa bahay ng bawat Pilipino. Uh -oh. Kaya ma'am, no. explanation if this is about board no. or bakit wala silang birth certificate. No, no, I will not explain. I will not give an explanation because it will entail that I explain intelligence operations with which we compromise offices who do intelligence operations. It will really compromise how they work. 
So no, no explanation will be given to the members of the House of Representatives. One final follow-up for me, ma'am. Then what's your response to accusations that an office like the DepEd and the OBP have no um, have no jurisdiction man, to have these confidential funds um, that are spent for national security? Well, the confidential funds was the first uh, transfer of uh, confidential funds was from the office, uh, from the contingent funds to the office of the vice president. And this was approved by the office of the president. The next year, confidential funds was uh, 2023. Uh, we submitted it to the Department of Budget and Management. It was approved by the Department of Budget and Management, and therefore it implies that it was approved by the office of the president because it was included in the national expenditure uh, program, the NEP. So, and then it was approved by Congress as well. The only reason why we did not use the confidential funds in the fourth quarter for both offices because we, I was already flagged by a friend inside the House of Representatives that they will attack you using confidential funds. So, so, yes. It was duly approved by the Office of the President and both Houses of Congress as well as because it was included in the General Appropriations Act. So it was not, we presented it, we defended it, they approved it. We used it and then um, the question on utilization is uh, under the Commission on Audit. That is how the system works. They cannot use or they cannot uh, twist the system according to their personal interests. Really, all these uh, circumstances and events happening surrounding the office of the vice president is a race to the presidential election in 2028. Unfortunately, they are attacking the office as well. So, dyan ako medyo, and the personnel of the office of the vice president. So, dyan ako medyo uh, pumapalang. Wala namang problema kung atakihin ninyo ako. Kasi, politiko naman talaga ako. Pero may problema ako pag inatake yung opisina at yung mga kasamahan ko sa dito sa opisina ng pangalawang pangulo na nagtatrabaho lang. By several layers in the government, but maybe just to go back to the basics, if you can explain to ordinary Filipinos why the office of the vice president needs confidential and intelligence funds. Okay, yes. For the office of the vice president, it's not the first time that uh, the office has granted confidential funds. During the time of uh, Vice President uh, Binay, the office was already given confidential funds. The confidential funds we use in relation to our work and national security. All the projects and the programs of the Office of the Vice President target poverty alleviation. There is a direct correlation between poverty and national uh, security. So um, what we do is we want to target the areas where we put our projects so that we achieve you know, peace and order security. So we don't want to, um, we don't want our projects put in areas where it is not needed for poverty alleviation. So we want to prioritize uh, the areas and the only way to do that is to use confidential funds to purchase information. So where are the target areas? We need that. 
so that our projects will be will serve uh, these areas. So that's why we needed the confidential funds. In, in the Department of Education, um, there is a uh, correlation as well of the education and national security. In fact, uh, that is one of, uh, of, there is a correlation as well of education and national uh, security. There are so many threats uh, to education, not just uh, insurgency. Um, and threats to a Department of Education personnel and students as well. And we wanted to target projects of the Department of Education as well in the most vulnerable areas and schools. That is why we needed uh, confidential funds. It's all about national security. And the position of the Office of the Vice President and the Department of Education is that the national security is a holistic concept. It's just, it's not just one, uh, like uh, territorial defense, sovereignty. No, national security is about food security. It's about quality of education. It's about poverty alleviation and everything else that we need to do as a country to get this, get us out of this poverty rut. Because you are in the NTFL campus, so couldn't have your offices work in the NTFL campus, as well as other government agencies that actually have national security mandates? Um, in the NTFL cap, they are only about. Um, uh, and, and local armed conflict. conflict. And local community armed conflict. Uh, and local. Uh, there, Elka. So that is very specific to that um, local conflict and uh, communism. So as I said, uh, the projects and the programs of OVP target poverty alleviation, and there's so many factors affecting poverty, and there are so many threats to education, not just uh, insurgency. But, but there are also other government agencies with national security mandates that you can work with. Your offices can work with. Yes, that is true. But we work far faster if we are allowed to purchase information and target our projects immediately on the certain school or certain barangay or certain uh, municipality. We we move faster if we can target our projects. Okay. Um, going back to the confidential funds, I was, that was also about confidential funds, but the, the means. They're being verified by the Philippine Statistics Authority. I know you said that you you can't explain because they're confidential in nature, but maybe just a yes or no, because other names have cropped up, uh, aside from Mary Grace Diablos, we have Shifi McDonald, Fernando Tempora, uh, Carlos Obishi, uh, Raimunda Nova. Uh, these were mentioned in a column at the Philippine, uh, in the Philippine Star, and uh, Joel Chua, Congressman Joel Chua was quoted. Are yes or no? Are these code names? Um, nakalimutan ko yung sagot ko. Sandali. Um, I cannot explain confidential funds because it will entail explaining um, intelligence operations. And there is a law that prohibits officials who gather information because of their office to divulge it in public. So it's the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. There is a specific provision of law. You cannot divulge confidential information that you um, that you uh, received while in office. So you won't even say these are no, that's because names. that will add to cases that may be filed against me. Uh, one last, one last, sorry. Yes. Why the choice of a letter submitted to the NDI instead I, of an affidavit? Wait, hold on. I can answer. I can give you a very short answer with regard to ARs. 
I had nothing to do with the preparation of ARs. It went down to the grassroots uh, level. So I had nothing to do with preparations of ARs. I was up here in the structure and money went down for information. So you have no knowledge why all these things were used in the house for this In the first place, we do not even know if these are um, ARs which came from uh, DepEd or OVP to COA to, because there's a chain of evidence supposedly in law, there's a change of chain of evidence, handling of evidence. So right now, nobody can really answer that because nobody knows if these ARs are true. Because we don't know if it came from us. That's what they're saying. That's they, what they're alleging. Yes, the that's ARs what they're saying. The OVP submitted to COA. Yes, but there is a legal process in the custody of evidence. So right now, we really cannot say if the ARs came from us, because the ARs that are with us has not been uh, checked with the ARs that are with them. You're denying that the ARs came No, from I'm just saying that we do not even know if the ARs with us are the ARs that are with them, because the ARs from, from, from the field, going to the office, going to COA, that's not how you do uh, legal work. It's not how you do legal work. There's a very stringent process in evidence. That is why even if there is no law prohibiting a person from divulging confidential information, person cannot answer that because we do not know if that paper that they're holding was a paper that came from the OVP in DepEd. Because there was no marking of exhibits. That was what I was telling Congressman Chua. You cannot ask the OVP personnel to say yes or no to an exhibit that was not marked as real and true, as correct, and as a faithful reproduction of the evidence of the office. So would your officer then be willing to certify? No, because there is no there is no question about that from the commission and audit. It's only a congressman saying that this paper and asking what is this paper about. There is no there is no case, and that is the to ask that about the paper is the sole jurisdiction of the Commission on Audit. Okay. So then if the Commission on Audit asks? That is what we are, that is what I was saying. We have been fully cooperative with the Commission on Audit. Everything that they asked for, we submitted. That is why there was a partial disallowance only. And even then, we are not yet finished with the process because we can still submit um, documents that are required by the Commission on Audit. That is the problem uh, right now, as I said. They are doing work that they are not, that, uh, that is not under the mandate of the House of Representatives. They cannot audit. They cannot question at all. They cannot make me answer um, and say that uh, uh, we represent the taxpayers and you have to answer. No, I will only answer to the Commission on Audit because that is the body who can ask us questions about the fund use. Next question. Captain Nicolai, please. Captain Nicolai, ma'am, on the issue of your budget not being reinstated or, re or restored, your reaction first on the decision of the bicameral conference committee. Mm, uh, well, we do not expect anything about the budget of the Office of the Vice President uh, anymore. As I said, um, the, uh, the, before I was saying that I am not the problem. I've been saying that I am not the problem. The problem of the Philippines is kahirapan, kagutuman, uh, corruption, and all the other peace and order issues, but uh, it, uh, it is clear 
uh, right now that they consider me as the problem already. So I will not help them solve the problem. A follow-up question. Uh, it's nearly January already. Your office will be uh, filing a new budget request for 2026. How much do you intend to ask from Congress for 2026? We have not discussed that. Uh, we, we need to wait for the budget call uh, because the budget call outlines the rules of uh, your proposal for budget uh, for your office. So we need to, to read uh, the budget call before we can sit down and discuss a budget proposal for the office of the vice president. Ma'am, on top of mind, are you still considering to hike the 733 million or will you be happy operating at the same extent as in 2026? I cannot answer that because uh, there are rules. Uh, they usually put conditions in the budget call and we really need to read the budget call to draft a, uh, a proposed budget. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to follow up on the budget, in the previous interviews, you said that you cannot give a definite answer on what will happen with regards to your satellite offices, given that the budget work uh, was not final at that time. But given that the VICAM already uh, decided not to reinstate the, your uh, original proposal of $2 billion, what would happen to your satellite offices? There are around, uh, I think, 10 satellite offices across the country. Yes, um, well, well we, 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 have to, we have to see if uh, we can continue with the projects that they are implementing. Uh, we need to see if, they, if the projects are still there and then if uh, they can still implement the projects. So that is something that we have to discuss with uh, the execom of the Office of the Vice President. Galing sa central office ng Office of the Vice President, wala kaming sinabi uh, sa kanila. Pero since uh, nababasa naman nila sa media yung nangyayari sa budget, I am sure that they are preparing themselves as well. Uh, uh, um, yes, wala pang update uh, doon sa pullout and uh, replacement. Uh, Nag-aantay kami uh, sa our portions of the Philippines kung kailan nila gagawin yon. Uh, yes, nagpadala ako ng letter sa Chief of Staff ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. Uh, meron lang ako mga nilatag doon na mga requests. Uh, pinakauna doon is um, ka, hindi na kami tatanggap well ako, hindi na ako tatanggap ng replacements. So kung magtanggal sila, hindi na nila i-replace. Iwan na lang nila kung ano yung maiwan. And kung wala mang maiwan dahil tatanggalin nila lahat, I already said that I will seek security arrangements outside of the air forces of the Philippines already. Yes, so we are exploring uh, private security services. Yes. So, my husband, ma huh? No, because uh, there are professional uh, security services. So, that's not uh, considered as a private uh, army. And um, I do not know if uh, these individuals are allowed to bring guns. So, that makes them less of uh, an army, ma'am, kung wala silang uh, barilo. Hindi ko alam yung sa professional uh, security services. But uh, that is one option uh, that we are preparing for in case there is a pull out of the entire um, entire security detail from the armed forces of the Philippines. Initially, I asked my husband and then he said that uh, he'll make ano, arrangements. 
Well, wala pa kami. Wala pa kami, ano. We do not have, we have not requested for proposals yet from uh, ser providers, service providers. We have not uh, requested a proposal yet. So, but, uh, I think only Filipino uh, organizations or agencies are allowed uh, that kind of service in within the Philippines. I think, Mama, I do not know, I do not know. But uh, I, I know that they are Filipinos, yes. No, I don't. <laughs> no, ma'am. No. But, um, uh, no, I do not uh, feel secure, as I said, that... Um, there's always been bias because when we see, say for example, DOJ, iniimbestigahan nila yung press con, and, pero hindi nila in, iniimbestigahan kung bakit kami umabot dun sa press con na yun. Uh, iniimbestigahan nila ang threat ko, no? Pero they've not ever investigated threats against me which are all documented but we do not give them the information because we don't trust them at all Yes, I know we have documents, sir. We have screen caps, we have photos, we have police blotters, we have everything on file. But uh, I never talked about it before because I felt na it was part of my job as vice president. You get that, Aba. So, and it does not affect my work. So all the more that uh, it was uh, inconsequential for me at the time. But right now, um, seeing that they are uh, picking out words that I said and making a case out of it and saying that these are threats. So I think they should start with where is this coming from? That is the question that they should ask themselves. But uh, I don't think they'll ever ask that of themselves. So we'll just move on to the cases and the impeachment and whatever will come uh, in the new year. At no, ma'am, buti na yung alam nila, ma'am, na pag namatay ako, hindi talaga ako, I will not die in vain. I've not seen the recent surveys, but uh, yes, that is what they are trying to do, turn public opinion. Uh, that is the strategy.
Yes, yes, but yes, yes. So, um, yes, that is what they are trying to do, turn uh, public opinion. That is a common strategy uh, in politics, um, black propaganda, and uh, everything. Um, will it hurt my chances? I'm not yet a candidate. So, right now, I am just the vice president of the Republic of the Philippines and working for the country. So, I am not yet a candidate. So I do not know if this will affect me. Um, maybe my decision, my decision in 2026 will consider what is happening right now. But uh, I cannot really say uh, with finality what will be the considerations for me to decide to run for president. Uh, as I said, uh, just give me the last quarter of 2026. I think that is the best time for any, any presidential candidate to decide uh, to run. Yes, oh, oh, yun naman ang sinasabi ko eh. It's all, uh, these are all political attacks um, from the from the attack from the left on the confidential funds, the meeting with the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and um, the attack on uh, the budget, and um, the other attacks that you see in uh, social media. So these are all directed to uh, uh, remove me from the race, Yes, and then of course remove me from office. Hi, that needs a sit down. I love you. Talaga. Sa sabihin ko sa yo, yun ang paano ko nalaman na gusto ni na plano or gusto ni Martin Romualdez na magpresident. Hi nakuts. Talaga. Sa sabihin ko sa yo. And it is his personal knowledge. Kasi marinig ko talaga. I was there. Uh, so, kaya alam ko. Kaya alam ko sa simula pa lang. Uh, nung narinig ko yun, ah, okay. Wala lang din sa akin yun. Kasi lahat naman pwedeng tumakbong presidente. Diba? Ang hindi ko lang in-expect, yung gagamitin mo yung buong gobyerno para sirain yung isang tao. Yan din. Kailangan magdesisyon ng taong bayan. Gusto niyo ba ng Vice President Martin Romualdez? Yan ang tanong. Kasi, yan naman kasi talaga yung plano niya. And so, kailangan mag-decide ng taong bayan. If you want somebody sitting there na hindi ninyo binoto. Are you determined to stay as vice president? No, I'm, I, I'm at peace. I'm at peace with whatever happens uh, to me. I've already accepted that uh, whatever happens to me, that will be uh, no, God's purpose uh, for my life. So I am at peace staying and uh, finishing my term because that is my contract with uh, the Filipino people, and I am at peace going if uh, I will be removed from office.